Hello Power Apps Makers, this is Ahmed Saleh again and today I have this new short video to show you how you can generate a PDF file from Dataverse tables and also use the recently added video of the legend Reza Durrani of how we can actually use the PDF function and an attachment control to basically open that PDF, maybe download it or just print it, right? So uh, let's hop in. So I have this gallery here, and this is my customers from a table that I call orders. And some of these customers has one or more orders that is being placed, like this customer here, Isaiah Langer actually has this uh, orders, he has three orders. Uh, I have also some information like the email address, the address, and the city. And as you can see here in the other side, top right, I have two buttons or two icons or pictures is one to generate that PDF out of this basically uh, uh, PDF right here or this container right here. So this is a big container. I have this container here. It's actually a horizontal container and I'm using uh, HTML text control to basically generate this kind of template HTML template right here and I will show you uh, how we do that. But now let's focus on these two right here. So the first one is actually using the PDF function, which is a still experimental, and to generate that PDF and save it in the plot, right? Uh, and then after that, I'm using the trick of Reza Durrani. So basically I can actually pass that PDF file uh, or variable that is assigned to this uh, created PDF to the attachment control uh, that we have in the canvas apps and then after that we can just basically open that pdf or maybe after that print it so let's see so i have this customer here so what i will do i will go ahead and actually click here i have created now the pdf right and then the next step is actually i will download that pdf so i click right here and you can see that it has been already downloaded so actually i can go ahead and save it in my computer or actually it's depend on your browser settings or I, if I click actually open, I can actually open it right here. And as you can see, this is the PDF right here. And now actually I can go either and print, uh, you know, I can go ahead and print that file. So how we do that? So let's go back and uh, see what we have done. As I said, this is just a gallery and this gallery is basically, you know, searching the customers right here. Uh, this is the table customer, which is actually related to the orders customers, as I have it right here in my in my order table. And then uh, I can search on this text box right here for the customer name, get these customers, and I click here. Once I click here, then I generate this. And as you can see here, this is basically, uh, as I told you, it's a container, right? And this container has another vertical container right here. And then uh, I have... Uh, let's see here. I have horizontal. Actually, this is a vertical container. I have inside it a, a, a horizontal co uh, con container. One of them is I'm just using as a header, and you can do whatever header that you want, basically. So this is gonna be your header. And I have this weary one here. Actually, it's just a rectangle, and it's it's like my footer. You can obviously replace this or add inside this container another basically container that can be horizontal to be your footer container. Uh, and you can just add all the elements that you want in your folder as well. And remember, these all can be dynamically because I'm already connected to the Dataverse data right here by the selected item. So wherever we select here, we can put in the folder. You might have it in the header and so on and so forth. Now let's come to this middle uh, HTML text here, right? As you can see, and this is the code I'm using basically to... Uh, create this kind of template as you can see here using my gallery that selected information so basically the email address in this case also the street address and then the city and then here obviously using some of the concat function uh, with a collection that I'm using basically uh, uh, to to parse or to, to to retrieve all the orders that related to this specific uh, customer was placed by this customer uh, if we go actually like, you know, when we go here on the select property, uh, so this is where we actually have in this basically collection that we have created. It's a, a we call it collection orders and it's basically gallery that selected that orders, right? Because again, the customer table that I'm showing its elements uh, right here in this gallery is related to. Uh, in our dataverse to the orders table in a relationship it's one to many right so i'm actually here basically bringing all the related records from that child table which is orders 
once we select on one of these uh, uh, customers. And this is where we're using actually this code right here to do this. This is again an HTML that's something that you can use with multiple case of scenario. I'm sharing this also in the blog post uh, along with this video as well. Now go back to this one here. So I have this is basically an image, right? And on, uh, this is the image and I have on top of it, it's just a transparent button. So I can actually just have the hover, uh, you know, um, motion right here where you can actually see this fingertip right here. And uh, in this button, what I'm using, I'm using actually the PDF function right here as it's experimental, how to get this function. Uh, to work, you have to go to the settings and then you have to go to upcoming features, experimental. And if you scroll down, you will find actually right here. This is our PDF function, as you can see it here, right? So you have to enable this. Remember, this is still experimental. Uh, and uh, to go back to the code again, it's setting a variable and this is the variable that I need to pass to my HTML control. So this is the variable. So it's a PDF and I can pass one of these controls that I can pass and it's very limited. I don't have the list of all these controls that we can pass to the PDF function. But again, as you can see, the PDF function right here has a target. And one of the targets that we can use is the container, which is actually great because in that container, we can have too many items or too many elements or too many controls. Uh, not to mention, actually, we can have also other containers inside the containers. So we are passing this container as it is with everything inside it, as we can see right here, right? And then after we pass that, these are some of these parameters or variable that you can use. For example, the DPI is basically printing resolution. And then you have the expand control containers, which is a set to true, and then the orientation. And again, maybe in this container, you will have multiple pages, right? Because, you know, of, of whatever scenario that you use in a use case, right? So you use expand to be true. So you can have these all multiple pages to show up in that in, in this basically BD, PDF function. And then the orientation, you can have portrait or actually land, landscape. In our case, I'm using landscape. That's it. That's as simple as using the PDF function. Now, after that's being clicked, now we have this variable already being initiated. I, I use that variable in the item property of my, as you can see here, this is my attachment again. And I'm going to put a link for the video that Reza Durrani actually published. Uh, it's a short video, so uh, you can know exactly how we got this control, basically added an edit form. And then from there, you copy that attachment control outside that edit form and you just paste it in your screen right here. Again, how I made it, it's all, all as you can see, it's just, it's just the attachment control and I made it basically just transparent and behind that control, I basically put an image just to show this is basically the image. This is just an image has no code whatsoever. So just to show that, you know, when you hover here, it's you basically clicking on that attachment control. And when you are clicking on that attachment control, that's when you open that PDF that was passed from the generation of uh, the, the, the container uh, as a PDF or the converting of the container uh, as a PDF file. In the item property of this data card or this attachment control, I have this items property. So it's basically you just set up the name and this name is basically going to be dynamic. It's whatever name that we are selecting on that gallery, right? So it's gallery that selected that the customer name and then I'm passing the value. So it's only two parameters for this control. It's the name and the value. And then I'm passing my uh, basically HTML or my PDF in that sense, right? So the PDF that we created right here. Uh, so this, this is the variable, right? And then uh, one other thing that you have to make sure that it has been set up is actually in the attachment control. If I go to the advanced properties, you can see that there is these two here, right here, and these are important. So the name has to be at the name. And then because by default, both of them, they're going to be named. Anytime you make any change in this code right here, that's you have to make sure that you go back and reset these. So you have to have the name is actually mapped to the name. The value is mapped to the value. And that's it. That's everything that we have basically to generate a PDF and to basically open that PDF or download that PDF as well. 
Hopefully, eventually, that PDF function can, you know, include some of other methods that we can use to do all of this. But for now, this is the workaround basically to do this. Uh, generate a PDF again using an HTML uh, uh, control. You know, build your HTML the way that you want if you know how to build these HTMLs. And again, the, the, uh, maybe the, 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 the tricky part it was actually uh, to come up with this concat uh function and use the collection basically uh with this basically table kind of format and again it's a very basic html tags to create a table dynamically based on the number of the order that this customer is uh, placed so now let's go ahead and try another customer so i have another customer that has actually more than one order so i'm have megan so i'm selecting mega right here and i can see here there's something actually going on so let's actually try again and I'm gonna go ahead play this so let's go just select Megan okay select someone else yeah uh, right see so see I have something in the resolution right here perfect and let's see what is going on here okay I think maybe it's just the Okay, let's actually try and print. So if I go ahead and click actually print now, generate the PDF, and then I will go ahead and print. As you can see here, it says uh, this is basically the file name, which is selected user. And I'm going to go ahead and click. As you can see, it's actually printing wherever it's there in the screen. So what we need to do is actually figure out why it's doing this. So I'm going to go ahead, save this again. And let's actually go back and try to play this app again just you know in the play mode because i know it was working i did not change any code so let's try some other customers okay so it's working here so probably it's just the previous uh you know so uh previous version so I have Miriam, I, I need to get Megan. As you can see here, Megan has these orders. Again, I have here the setting is only actually after that PDF is generated in the plop, we want actually to show that ability to basically download it. So if I click here now, uh, it should actually, as you can see here, it's pop up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and click this one. Oops, I guess I have not, have, okay. So this is the not last version. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and edit again. All right, it's actually open still somewhere. I guess that's maybe why. Okay, let's actually play from here. I'm going to go ahead and find Megan. Right, right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and select. Right, and then go ahead and print. And here you go. I'm going to go actually open this file now right here as you can see it. Perfect. So that's basically it. Uh, I wish you have enjoyed this video. Please, if you do, like, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, share this with, uh, um, you know, uh, other people in the community. I know this is, has been uh, one of these requests that to have some functionality within uh, Canvas apps that we can actually generate PDF easily and just print them or, you know, download them and so on and so forth. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video.